do you smell? What the shuck is flipping? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Mr. Shuck's Flip ELA. We are going to be starting a new short story this week, and the title of that story is A Day's Wait by Ernest Hemingway. It starts on pages 80 through 85 of your textbook. So as always, step one should be to fill in the title, author, and page number of your talking to the text paper for this particular story. So once again, the title is A Day's Wait, the author is Ernest Hemingway, and the story starts on page 80. Pause the video at this time to fill in the information on your talking to the text paper. Now that we have the information filled in on your talking to the text paper, we are going to take a few notes about our author, Mr. Ernest Hemingway. If you have your textbook with you, we are on page 84. If you do not have your textbook with you, that is fine. Ernest Hemingway lived from 1899 through 1961. I like to call Ernest Hemingway the most interesting writer in the world. Reading from page 84 in the textbook. Ernest Hemingway was born in Oak Park, Illinois. The son of a doctor, he spent his first 17 summers in northern Michigan, where his father introduced him to hunting and fishing. In high school, Hemingway boxed and played football, but he also wrote poetry, stories, and the gossip column for his school newspaper. When the United States entered World War I, Hemingway volunteered and became an American Red Cross ambulance driver in Italy. He was 19 when a bomb that landed three feet away filled his right leg with 227 pieces of shrapnel. He is the most interesting writer in the world. After returning from the war, Hemingway wrote many short stories and novels that are now considered classics. In them, he portrays men who show grace under pressure, that is, calm courage in the face of great danger or death. In his own life, Hemingway relentlessly pursued excitement and danger. He hunted and fished big game all over the world and survived several plane crashes along with fierce charges of the large animals that he loved to hunt. His exploits made him as famous as any movie star. In A Day's Wait, Hemingway again explores the theme of grace under pressure. This time he focuses on a young boy's first awareness of his own mortality. The silences and sparse dialogue in the story reflect the belief of Hemingway's heroes that they should keep a tight rein on their fears and other emotions. The story also illustrates Hemingway's approach to writing. Quote, I always try to write on the principle of the iceberg. There is seven-eighths of it underwater for every part that shows. Hemingway worked hard to keep up his image of toughness, but his son Gregory remembers a more human side. He told me about the times he'd been scared as a boy, how he used to dream about a furry monster who would grow taller and taller every night, and then, just as it was, it was about to eat him, would jump over the fence. He said fear was perfectly natural and nothing to be ashamed of. The trick to mastering it was controlling your imagination, but he said he knew how hard that was for a boy. He said he loved to read the Bible when he was seven or eight because it was so full of battles. But I wasn't much good at reading at first, Gig, just like you. It was years before I realized that gladly the cross-eyed bear didn't refer to a kindly animal. I could easily imagine a cross-eyed bear and gladly seemed like such a lovely name for one. For those of you reading The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, there is a prime example of an acorn. Mainly, he just told me stories about how he had fished and hunted in the Michigan North Woods and about how he wished he could have stayed my age and lived there forever until I fell asleep. Hemingway won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1954. Today, he is regarded as one of the greatest writers of the 20th century. So, as you can see, Ernest Hemingway, who volunteered at 19 years old to be an ambulance driver for the Red Cross during World War I, 
had a bomb exploded three feet away from him and it filled his leg with 227 pieces of shrapnel, which is like sharp, hot, jagged pieces of metal. He hunted big game. He fished all over the world. He survived not one, but several different plane crashes and he won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1954. You can see why he is the most interesting writer in the world. Now that we have finished with our notes on Ernest Hemingway, we are going to start to add some new academic words to our Talking to the Text paper. So if you open up to your academic words section, we will begin to add these words now. First academic word that we are going to add is characterization. Characterization is the way that a writer creates a character. You can pause the video to write down this definition now. Direct characterization is a type of characterization. When an author uses direct characterization, they are telling the reader directly what the character is like. A good example of direct characterization would be from Jean Fritz's story, Homesick, when she says, Miss Williams was pinch-faced and bossy. Indirect characterization is another type of characterization. This is when the reader has to figure out what the character is like based on their actions, their appearance, their words, or how other characters might interact and respond with them. An inference is an educated guess that is based on reading or prior knowledge. Now that we have our new academic words added, let's turn to our textbooks to page 80 and take a look at the literature and science section. If you do not have your textbook with you, that is fine. You can just listen for this time period. To understand this story, you have to know that there are two kinds of thermometers, each using a different temperature scale. On the Celsius thermometer used in Europe and pretty much every other country in the world except for America, the boiling point is 100 degrees. On the Fahrenheit thermometer, which is the thermometer that we use here in America, the boiling point is much higher, 212 degrees. Well, did you know that there is actually a very simple equation that you can use to convert Celsius temperature to Fahrenheit temperature. So let's do a little bit of math. Here is your equation for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. You need to take nine fifths of your Celsius temperature or C and add 32 degrees that will give you your Fahrenheit temperature. Now I know you're sitting there and you're probably saying to yourself, Mr. Shuck, when are we ever going to have to use this? When am I ever going to have to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit? Well, let's put ourselves on a plane traveling to Australia. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Qantas Airlines, the spirit of Australia. We'll be landing shortly in Queensland, Australia, where the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So if our temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, how do I know if I need to wear shorts and a t-shirt or a hoodie and jeans? Let's do some math. 9 fifths C plus 32. So 9 fifths of 30 plus 32 equals your Fahrenheit temperature. Pause the video at this time, figure out your temperature in Fahrenheit, and be ready to discuss this and the details of Ernest Hemingway's life tomorrow at the beginning of class. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow.